Justin Hawkins writes again. Good day to you. Uh, it is I, Justin Hawkins. Uh, this is Justin Hawkins writes again, my YouTube channel. Don't forget like and subscribe. Also, um, today I am going to talk to you about an artist that I think should be in. I don't know the the music equivalent of the the big top ten. I think, you know, you've got your Michael Jacksons and you've got your Elton Johns and you've got your, your Rolling Stoneses and your Beatles's and your Led Zeppelins and the ACDCs. Um, I think Todd Rundgren should be in there. I think he's written hundreds of brilliant songs, made some amazing albums. He's a great producer, awesome musician, really lovely uh, singer, and also a visionary that sort of foretold and was a a grim harbinger of the problems that musicians have faced in the music trade since the internet. Um, right at the beginning of the internet, I suppose. Um, well, at least a long time before other people realised that it was curtains for people like me. Um, he, um, he made, he did some kind of, it must have, must have been a, uh, either a TED talk or some sort of seminar at a music conference in which he said that musicians in the very beginning w were providing a service, you know, when we were minstrels or, you know, just blokes with lutes walking around uh, entertaining kings and aristocracy and other people like that, I suppose. Well, just, or even just performers of any sort. The touring arts, it was a service. And then with the advent of recorded music, it became a product that we provide provided so there was a service and a product and then with the internet and piracy streaming and all the things that he couldn't have been aware of when he made these remarks um it regressed to being just a service i think that's a really nice way to look at it really because there's still a place for musicians and people who love the 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 noble art will continue to pursue it um it's just that i don't think it's an aspirational career path anymore you know you're not looking at the the rock star at the end of the road in the huge house unless you happen to live on the same road as somebody from the era when people bought records really um but i think that because it's such a beautiful thing to do and provide the service i think it'll it'll always flourish there'll always be a place people love music don't they they really do and they love and people love making music and doing things that people love so I don't know, he saw it coming. I really respect him for that, and I think he deserves a little bit of recognition, um, even though I don't think what he said at the time was welcome, because, well, it's obviously disastrous if you run a record company. You're always looking for a new way to fuck the artist. I'm just kidding. Um, I love record labels, as I'm sure as some of you have noticed. Um, let's have a look at this. I made a playlist for you of Todd Rundgren's songs. Um, the other thing I want to say about Todd Rundgren, very quickly, is that he is a great producer. He produced uh, Bat Out of Hell for Meatloaf. Like and that's an album on which uh, Jim Steinman wrote all the songs. And then later, remember that really, really famous and successful Def Leppard record called Hysteria? Well, there was an aborted session of, of that you know they've spent a long time recording with uh, Jim Steinman I, I think erroneously uh, because the label assumed that Jim Steinman having made Bat Out of Hell would make a brilliant Def Leppard record but Jim Steinman wasn't the producer it was Todd Rundgren people often forget that um, he's a guy who likes to vary speed vocals it makes vocalists sound younger you can't really do it with computers anymore that's one, one thing you can't do I suppose you there probably is some, something that allows you to vary speed of Pro Tools session. But in the olden days, you used to just make the tape a bit slower, sing, and then when you sped the tape back up to mix it, it sounded younger. Everyone was doing it. Todd Rundgren, um, presumably Meatloaf on that record, um, because Todd Rundgren recorded him. Um, John Lennon used to do it all the time. Oasis did it in the 90s. It's just one of those techniques that... Uh, I'm fond of hearing it because it really ages a, a recording in an interesting way. But I always think of Todd when I hear it. Um, anyway, so the first song I put on the um, on my Todd Rundgren mega mix, uh, it's called the Todd Rundgren Starter Pack, and you'll be able to find a link to it in the description. 
So I chose The Range War from Runt, the ballad of Todd Rundgren. It's a great album, and it has awesome artwork of him wearing a blue T-shirt, brown belt, blue jeans that look... Um, how can I put this? Agricultural as opposed to sort of stylish in the way they're cut, you know. Definitely the working man at the piano. Maybe he's even... Maybe even that is, is one of his sort of little visual harbingers of a difficult time ahead for musicians. Anyway, he's got a noose around his neck playing a piano with his back to the camera. It's, it's awesome. It's one of the, one of the great, one of my favourite um, album sleeves. Um, yeah, and The Range War, I chose it because the lyrics are so interesting. Um, it's kind of like a limerick, but maybe a little bit cleverer. It's not quite a limerick. Um, like, for example, the first verse goes... Um, your daddy runs sheep and my uncle runs cattle. Nothing can keep us out of this battle they wage as it burns up the range till no man is left in the saddle. He doesn't do it in that dramatic way. I'm just selling the lyric. Your daddy runs sheep and my uncle runs cattle. Which I think is really, it's a beautiful story uh, told over the course of four verses, I think. Um... It's got quite an interesting meter to it. It sounds like frontier kind of campfire country music. It's, it's lovely. Um, have a listen and let me know what you think. Uh, the next one I chose wasn't written by Todd Rundgren, but I, it appears on the album Something Anything, which I think is probably his seminal work. If you're going to buy a, a, a Todd Rundgren album, get that. It's a double album. Half of it sounds like it's recorded with a band of unbelievable musicians, and half of it sounds like he's sort of slightly self-indulgently performed a lot of the instruments himself. Um, but there's so much great material on there and really interesting sort of little musical vignettes and bits where he's sort of t actually just talking about recording techniques and stuff. Um, if you choose one album, choose that, you, something stroke anything. Um, the song on there that I, that I put next is uh, Dust in the Wind. It's written by Mark Moogie Klingman, who is the keyboard player for Todd Rundgren's band. Um, I'm not aware of any other sort of writing credits that he has uh, on Todd's work. I mean, it must be difficult to get a song over the line if you're working with somebody who's, who is as prolific as Todd Rundgren was, perhaps is. But it's got this really lovely verse, and it's like a... Oh, I'll turn this up, excuse me. Tell everyone that I am sorry, truly sorry. All of the wrongs are done I never meant to hurt nobody, no Lord, I never meant to do no wrong I have paid, no, I have lied I have paid and I have cheated And I know my ship won't be coming in as I lay me down to take my rest I see that it's just dust in the wind Take hold my hand, hold it tighter, ever tighter I could sing that all day, love that song. Anyway, I'll put that on the playlist for you. Um, it's a really brilliant version, there's a great solo in there as well, which, uh, I mean, Todd Rundgren is an underrated guitar player as well. Um... So check it out. And the next one I chose is Wolfman Jack. It's also from Something Anything. It's kind of, I think it appears second or third in the, in the album itself. Um, it's, um, it's an example of what it sounds like when one man's doing all the backing vocals and it's very speedy to sound female. The main vocal is, is really manic um, and the very speed really helps with that too. It's got some really interesting sort of clarinet and saxophone parts that are panned hard and hard. And, and I think I, I just said hard on. But as a production, it's just it's really great to hear one man creating something akin to, to Motown. But it must have taken ages. And, and it's just a, it's a real a feat of ingenuity and engineering. It's just it's really good. Ingenuity? Ingenuity. Ingenuity. I don't know. The, the word's lost all of its meaning. Um, the next one I chose is from the same record. There's so many. There's so many great songs on something. Anything I had to choose. I couldn't really leave any any of these free out. But um, it wouldn't have made any difference. 
Um, for those of you who aren't aware of it, it's got a verse that goes, and you'll recognise the melodies immediately if you are if you if you are au fait with the work of Wet 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 from the 1990s. So check this out. Do you remember the last time I said if I ever thought of lying? I'd rather think of dying instead. Maybe you remember that blue did that way. It sounds exactly like that wet, wet, wet song, Good Night Girl, or. So which was, I think, one of wet, wet's comeback songs when he'd grown his hair out and, and everyone was like, oh, listen to that beautiful melody. And I was listening to it thinking, yeah. Of course it's a beautiful melody. It's from the Todd Rundgren song. It wouldn't have made any difference. So have a listen to where that, that melody was most likely influenced by and um, see what you think. Um, the last and certainly by no means least song that I chose for the Todd Rundgren starter pack, link in the description, um, is Can We Still Be Friends? It's just one of those songs that um, I wish I'd written. It's just so simple. When you play it, it brings a tear to the eye. I, I won't even do it for you because I won't do it justice. I just won't. And I'll probably cry. Nobody wants to see that. Um, but anyway, it has this brilliant sort of breakdown after the second sort of pre-chorus where it, oh, 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 all these voices and it's a little bit akin to... It sounds like it's trying to do the same sort of thing as the sort of, you know... the. The, the interlude all part of uh, <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody, when, which, uh, which is made famous in the Wayne's world. It's not as in intense as that, but it's something along those lines in terms of the concept. <laughs> anyway, I just love listening to it. I hope you do too. Um, that's all I'm going to say about this stuff. It's Todd Rundgren. If you weren't familiar with him before, you're welcome. If you were... It's great to address fellow music enthusiasts to understand what's up. And uh, I'll see you on the ice. Many thanks and adieu. Justin Hawkins writes again each and every day. Don't know why I added that last bit. Cheers. <laughs>